Let's pray. Young people going back. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to serve you each day. And Lord, I know what it is to work and to be tired. I know about all those things, Father. Years and years and years of it. But I thank you that we live by the life of another. And some folks have tapped into it and some haven't. Help us, Lord, Lord, to tap into your anointing, your life. Because of you, we have our life in Christ. And that life manifests itself. It has to manifest itself. If it's there, it will manifest itself. If we'll let it. And I want to thank you for that tonight. And I give you honor and glory and praise for this word tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, the young folks. Y'all want to come over and sit over here? Do you feel like doing that? Because all the anointing is going to be on this side tonight, okay? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, let's uh, begin our message tonight. I want to share from my heart why Christ died for us. Why did Christ have to die for us? You could name this sermon that. But the first uh, scripture that we want to uh, put on the board tonight is found in chapter Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Why did Christ come down here? Well, let me say this. He came down here for you and for me. Look at Luke 19, 10. For the Son of Man came, and where did he come from? Heaven. To seek and to save that which was lost. So let's identify those that were lost. Was there anybody in here that was lost? Raise your hand. Yeah, you were lost. Now just think if God left you in that lost condition, just think if Jesus had not come down and seek you out. Notice that word, he came to seek. When I see that word, I think hide and seek. Most of it was hiding. And to save that which was lost. So he seeked us out and he saved us. Why did he save us? Because we were lost. Well, now think about it for a moment. If we had not been saved, if Jesus had not seeked us out and saved us, and we just lived our life down here for ourselves, and died, where would you and me be? Somebody tell me. Say it out loud. Hell. Woo, man, thank you, Jesus. Doesn't that just put puts thankfulness in your heart? Just think if he had not come, and if he had not seeked us out, we would have died in that lost condition, and ended up in hell. Let, let's, 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 let's just get a little view of hell here tonight. What has God saved us from? Jesus, you come down here to save us. So let's look over here in verse Luke uh, 16, starting with verse 19. Let's get a little vision of what we've been saved from. Now, we know we've been saved from sin. Uh, we're in the process of being saved from self. That's a process of sanctification because we all have a tendency to lean towards the flesh appetites more than sometimes the spiritual appetites. But he is sanctifying us and making us willing to do his good will and his good pleasure. Now look what it says. And we'll just follow this th through verse by verse until we get all the way down to verse 31. Okay? Look what it says. Now, there was a certain rich man who habitually clothed himself in purple and fine linen and revealed and, and uh, reveled and uh, feasted and made merry in splendor every day. Okay? Next verse. All right, this is a rich man. This is an individual. 
This is really not a, a, a parable. It's a true story of a rich man and a poor man. And Jesus is speaking here. He says, now at his gate, that is at the rich man's gate, you know, where they built houses back in those days, they would have, many times they would have this wall around the house and they'd have a gate. You had to come through the gate first before you get into the house. So at his gate, there was carelessly dropped down and left a certain utterly destitute man named Lazarus. Reduced to begging arms, and you know what that is, begging arms? In other words, they're begging for somebody to give him some money where he could buy some food. And covered with I'm trying to ulcerated sores. That's pretty bad, isn't it? How miserable that man must have been. You know, when you're hungry, you're hungry, aren't you? How many's ever been hungry? How many's ever really been hungry where you felt like you're starving to death? I, I have a few times. Thank goodness for peanut butter and crackers. And at his gate, there was, and, and, and uh, this guy was, you got to see the picture. Inside the house, this guy, he had everything. Hallelujah. No problem at all. Had no sores. This guy is at the gate. He's covered with uh, these sores and everything. He's a poor man. All right, next verse. Now, this is what the Lord is saving us from. Okay, now catch that. He eagerly desired to be satisfied with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs even came and licked his sores. That's a pretty picture, isn't it? They say there is a certain amount of healing in dogs' uh, spittoon <laughs> when, they, when they licked it, licked your sores. Okay, go to the next one. Now, we want to see the picture. This is what God is going to, he's going to show us what he's delivered us from. And boy, let me see, if you really see the picture, if you can see the flames of hell, if you can see the crying and the weeping and the torment of people in hell, it'll put a little zip in your zap. Anybody heard what I just said? And it occurred that the man reduced to begging, seduced to begging, died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Now here's the picture I want you to see. Before Christ was crucified, when people died, they went into the underworld. Okay? And in the underworld, that is in the earth, there was two uh, compartments. One compartment was called Abraham, uh, Abraham's bosom. The other apartment was called hell. And the people that went to hell was those that didn't serve God and lived for themselves. And they ended up in hell. Now remember Jesus is saying this. So if you want to argue about it, argue with Jesus. Okay? Jesus is trying to wake us up and see, hey, this is why I came to seek and to save. And you won't have to worry about that because I've seeked you out and I've saved you. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Woo! You're getting it now, honey child. Now, on Abraham's bosom, over here in this compartment, is where the, the saints went, those that believed in God and obeyed God and served God the best they could. When they died, their spirit man went down in that compartment called Abraham's bosom, okay? Now, between Abraham's bosom, that compartment, and the compartment of hell, there was a gulf between, a division between those two compartments. Therefore, if you were in hell, you could not come over into Abraham's bosom in that compartment, or if you were in uh, Abraham's uh, a compartment over there where Abraham was, Father Abraham, you couldn't cross that gulf and get over there in hell. And I don't think anybody would want to. <laughs> so let's read on a little bit here now. They both had died, all right? And in Hades, the rim of the dead, or in hell, being in torment. Oh, my goodness. When you're in hell, you're in torment. He lifted up his eyes, that is, the rich man did, and saw Abraham far away over there across the gulf and Lazarus in his bosom. 
All right, next verse, what did he say? And he cried out and said, Father Abraham, have pity and mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish and in this flame. So we see that over there in hell, there is flames. And those that over there are not happy. They're not singing hallelujah. They are in torment. This rich man was in torment. Now remember, he had it made when he was on earth. All his food, everything was great. And Lazarus had a hard time. But now it has changed where Lazarus is being blessed and the rich man is being tormented day and night throughout eternities of eternities of eternities. Now people say, I thought God was a loving God. We'll get to that in just a minute. But let's keep this picture in our mind because we need to, we need to understand this for our own selves and our families and people that we are in contact and work with every day and we never mention anything about when you die, where are you going? And they don't know. That's why God left us down here to bear witness to what Christ has done in the church as a whole. Now, I know some of you do witness, but I'm talking about, remember, this message goes out. And I tell you, I have never had, I think I might have had one person in all of my 82 years, two people, my wife and somebody else that witnessed to me in all those 82 years. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. How many people have ever come up to you and told you about Jesus? All right. If they have, raise your hand. I want to see. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight people have come up to you. All right. I had two people. My wife and some other person. I can't remember their name a long time ago. Now I'm going to ask you another question. How many people have you ever went up and witnessed to and shared Christ with? How many has ever done that in here? Now don't lie, member of the Holy Ghost. Now see your hands. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, I want to encourage you to, to do that. Every time I go out, that's why I, I go out and take Susan, but I go out and I witness that every, every person I can. And I got my little take, my little, um, my little, what I want to call it, technique, if you want to call that. And I can come right into any situation, take charge of that situation, and share Christ. I don't care how many people is around me. It don't bother me. I don't even know they're there. I got my little thing. Rick, would you come up? I let our elder come up here. Now, I've shared this before. I love to share the good news with people. Now, Rick is man. He's he's down at uh, uh, Walmart. He's going to buy some motor oil. He's looking for the motor oil, and I'm coming down the thing there. And you're looking for the motor oil. Hey, how you doing today? I'm doing all right. Huh? You all right? You doing all right? Yeah. Okay. I got a question. I want to ask you. Mm. Nothing personal. Just want to ask you a question. I don't know. Sir. How do you hide a camel in the desert? <laughs> Huh? You camouflage him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you camouflage him. Camouflage. And we get a chance when you got a computer. Yeah. No, I don't know if you've ever done it, but you ought to check that out. Mm -hmm. I hear you're on there. Really? <laughs> yeah, you're on there. <laughs> but listen, check that out. All right. And uh, there's a lot of messages, over 100 messages are on there. And if you don't like what you hear, just tear that up and forget about it. Now I'll ask you a question. Do you know the Lord? No. Would you like to know him? Uh, not really. Okay. Well, do you know that if you die without knowing the Lord, that where you would go? I'll probably go to heaven. Well, you'll go to hell. How can you say that? Because the Bible tells us so. And God don't lie. God's not a man that he should lie. 
So I'm here to let you know you don't have to go to hell. I'm here to let you know that the Lord loves you and died for you on Calvary. And the Bible says that I will repent and accept Christ as your personal Savior and confess with your mouth, make him your Lord and Savior, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You'll be saved and you won't have to go to hell. How do you know all this? All of this is in the Bible. God has given us his word. He has sent his word to heal us and to t show us and tell us what our condition is. And the Bible plainly says, and you can see it. You know why people kill people? Yeah, they get mad at them. Because they're sinners. Oh. Yeah, yeah, they're sinners. And that's all they know to do, just be selfish and kill people. I've never killed anybody. No, but uh, have you ever told a lie? Oh, yeah. He's honest. <laughs> all right. The Bible says if you break one law, you're guilty of them all. Well, that's what you think, but I'm going to tell you what Jesus did. He came to this earth to seek you out and save you, and you got a decision to make. Now, if, that's, if you want to go to hell, that's, you know, he won't force you. He don't want you. It's not God's will for any man to perish, but all to come to repentance. He loved you so much to suffer for you, to die on that cross. They whipped him. They beat him. They put thorns on his head. He didn't do it for himself. He did it for you, and he did it for me. He did it for all people. You sound like you believe this stuff. Beg your pardon? You sound like you believe this. I do, it with all my heart, soul. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for those that believe. So God has given you a chance right now through me to get right with God. Do you want to get right, or you want to go on your way and live your life for yourself? Well, I want to get right. All right. Are, are you ready? Ready now? Right now, with all these people here. I can do it now? Right now. All right, let's do you, it. If you really, okay, take my hand. All right. I want you to say, Lord, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. From all my sins. From all my sins. I repent. I repent. And I turn to Jesus. I turn to Jesus. And I crown him Lord of my life. I crown him Lord of my life. And receive him. And receive him. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. And I believe. And I believe. In my heart. In my heart. That God raised him from the dead. That God raised him from the therefore dead. Therefore, I'm saved. Therefore, I'm saved. Congratulations. Thank You've just you. entered into the kingdom of God. I did. Absolutely. And All your right. faith. Now, I want to encourage you to check some of the message, especially that one on Rick Notfelt. Rick Notfelt? Yeah, you'll check it out. How do you spell that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a couple in there by Bob Tilden and Frank and, and uh, Willie, you know, and a few others. Okay. But listen, find you a good sp a church that preaches the word of God. Walk with God. God's going to manifest himself to you. And, and he's going to become more real to you than I am right now. Absolutely. As you get into the word of God, the Holy Spirit will begin to speak to you. He'll guide you. He'll direct you. And you're going to have a new life. But you've got to feed that inner man. Now, your inner man's been born again. And one day that outer man is going to be, uh, have a, be a brand new body. You'll have a brand new glorified body. It's, it's, it's exciting. So you've got to get into words. There's a lot you've got to learn. But now you put your faith in Christ. And the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you're saved right now. You're a child of God. Now go from here. Find you a good spirit-filled church. Get in there and learn about the Lord. Right. Amen? Well, I've got to get my 10W30 right now. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, yeah, get your 1030 oil. And I want to ask you a question. If you didn't put any oil in that car, how long would it last? Not long. It'd burn up and go to hell. That's right. <laughs> He's got it. <laughs> now, is that hard? Is that hard? Listen, let me tell you something. We're in the last days. And let me tell you, they're going to come after us. Are you listening? I'm trying to wake the church up. They go, it ain't going to be fuzzy fuzzy anymore. There's going to be some hard times that we've got to be strong, courageous. All right, here we go. We've got a guy over here. You believe in Jesus Christ? Yes, sir. All right, I've got a gun right here. If you say that you believe in Jesus Christ, I'll tell you what you do. If you don't believe in Allah and, and be converted to the Muslim faith, and if you don't deny Jesus Christ right here, I'm going to blow your brains out. Jesus is Lord. 
Boom! Now where is he? See, he's in heaven. Just like that. You don't have to fear. Because how many of you know your body's going to die anyway? Is that true? See, so you've got to make your mind get solid in God. All the way with God. Because that's what's happening overseas. How many understand what's happening overseas? In Syria right now, in Iraq. They had, I forget how many young people that was just watching a, 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 a football game or something on TV. And ISIS found out that they were doing that. They took those young people out and they cut their heads off. That's what's happening in our world. See, it ain't like it used to be a long time ago. See, these nations have atomic bombs. So when one of those things go off, see, that's what our nation is trying to keep out is that these terrorists won't bring an atomic bomb of the, in a suitcase and set it down at your doorstep and it goes off and this whole neighborhood is gone. Now, you don't need to fear, but get, make sure your, your life is straight all the way with God. And if you do go out, somebody does shoot you. How many of you know Frank was telling me about, what was the name of the, uh, Frankie, Frankie's, uh, Frankie's fun, how many know where Frankie's fun uh, thing is, whatever, the, somebody in the parking lot shot somebody right there. That's right at our doorstep. All over America, all over the world. But the Bible has prophesied about these days. We need to know the day that we live in and be prepared to share Christ with people. <sighs> How many people do you think die every second? Anybody know? Thousands. Going out just like that. Coming in, going out like that. We are blessed to have lived this long. We are blessed to have lived this long. Now look at that. And he cried out and said, Father Abraham, have pity and mercy on me. Now listen, while you're alive here is when you make your decision. Because I've never seen in the scriptures where there is a place that you go, where you suffer enough, to purify you for heaven. No, it's the blood that purifies us. It's the blood that cleanses us. No amount of works that we can do can cleanse us from sin. It's the blood of Christ. It's what Christ did on that cross. Now, we're talking about hell here, but we're talking about, we're looking at it, what he's delivered us from. We need to know what he delivered us from. Why do you think he came all the way down here to seek and to save us? Well, we won't have to go to that place called hell. Can we understand that? Wow, that's powerful. We need to get that in our brain, in our con conscious mind. Now, let's read, on, let's read on here. Now, the guy is suffering. Just a little bit of water on my, on, my, on my tongue. Be fine. Go to the next verse. Now, this is what the Lord is saying. Now, but Abraham said, child, he's talking to the Lazarus now. Remember that you in your lifetime fully received what is due you in comforts and delights and Lazarus in like manner, the uncomforts and distresses. But now he is comforted here and you are in anguish. So there's people on this world today that are out there hipping it up. They're on these nice ships. Everything goes, whatever they want, just living for South. Yeah. Enjoy it while you can. Christ is coming. It's not God's will that any perish, the Bible says. And they just think, yeah, there's no hell. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have a good time. Mm -hmm. Here's what Paul said. If there's no resurrection, you know what Paul said? If there's no resurrection, how many knows what Paul said? If there's no resurrection... Let's go down to the joint, drink a few beers, do it a few little dancing, and let the good times roll.
That's what he said in 1 Corinthians 15. How many of you know that? Yeah, that's what Paul said. If there's no, re if there's no resurrection, why are we here? But we know there is a resurrection. We know there's a judgment. And the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die, and then the judgment. That's in Hebrews. God came down here and delivered us from that place called hell. Give him glory. Go ahead. I just thank him for it right now. Wow, thank you. I mean, I have such appreciation in my heart for that. All right, go to the next verse. All right. And besides all this, between us and you is a great... Hallelujah. Uh, that's a hard word. I don't know. Chisholm. Is that right? What is it? Ch what? That's right has been fixed in order that those who want to pass from this place to you may not be able, and no one may pass from there to us. So it's a gulf between. It's, a, it's, a, it's just like on this side of the aisle, and you got this gulf in between, and everybody over there is in hell, and we're over here in heaven. And you can't pass from there through that to get over there, and vice versa. That's the picture down there. Now, let me say this. Abraham's bosom, which is, was paradise, has been moved to heaven now. And that's why the, cha the Bible says in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9, verse 8, I'm sorry. Absent from the body, what? Present with the Lord. We go right to be with the Lord. Now that's something to praise God for. Man, boom, we're with the Lord. Now, you see the picture. Now, after Christ was resurrected, hell stayed where it was at, but paradise was moved to heaven. And that's where we go when we pass away. All right, go to the next verse. And the man said, then, Father, I beseech you to send him to my father's house. Well, why? Why would you want Lazarus to go to the rich man's house? All right, let's see. Next verse. For I have five brothers, so that he may give solemn testimony and warn them, lest they too come into this place of torment. Well, that's our job, really. Not for Lazarus to come out. No, for us here, the church, is to tell people about that place where they don't have to go there. All right? All right. Next verse. But Abraham said, they have Moses, they have Bob, and the shield of faith, and the prophets. Let them hear and listen to them. See, I'm putting it down to modern. Did you understand what I just said? How many of you understand what I just said? Yeah, that's our job. Now look at the next verse. But he answered, no, Father, Abraham. But if someone from the dead goes to them... Can you imagine, there you are at home all by yourself. And this brother you knew, you knew uh, let's say, five years ago had died, right? And then and all of a sudden you have, you hear this. And you go to the door and you open it. And this person that you knew that died five years ago was standing at your door. How would you take that? How many's got a back door to the house? <laughs> no, it, it ain't gonna work that way. We that are alive is supposed to knock on people's doors, and I've done it a many a time. Listen, if they rejected that, so what? I mean, you know, we don't want that, but they're not rejecting us. Our job is to tell the truth. Okay, now we know. That Satan has done his work. Satan has blinded the unbeliever from the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. So that's why I do a lot of praying. And I use my weapons because they are mighty through God to the tearing down of strongholds. And every time I go, every morning I do a certain amount of spiritual warfare. I just mount up into the heavens 
And I just look around and I take charge. I take the weapons of God, which are mighty through God. I'm out there by myself, and I'm coming up against principalities. I have my full armor on. Ephesians chapter 6, you remember that? Start with verse, be strong in the Lord. Did you know, actually, what has strengthened me more, I think, there's, there's many things strengthened me. The Word of God, but intercess, interceding prayer, praying for others, strengthened your spirit. This is why people are just passive. They're just, they have no life in their spirit because they don't activate your spirit. How many of you know you sit down 24-7? Oh. <clears throat> How many of you know you, your strength is going to leave you? If your spirit is sitting down 24-7, you're not going to have a strong spirit. You've got to exercise your spirit in prayer. You've got to give it fuel, the Word of God. My spirit is strong. Now listen, it took a while to get it strong because I, I mean, I had to go through some inner healing. One day I was sitting in the chair and, and Susan was praying and in the spirit, she saw a hole in my spirit. I drink the word of God and it would leak all out. A hole in my spirit. And she prayed, God, heal his spirit. She said, Bob, I see you're a hole in your spirit and there's pus all around that. Now that's what you call a wounded spirit. The Bible says a wounded spirit, who can bear? If your spirit's been wounded, you can't bear anything. Everything scares you. Your life scares you. Death scares you. How many of you know Christ conquered death? Yeah, the Bible says, I wish I had time to preach on that tonight. He overcame hell for us. He overcame death for us. He, get, he has given us eternal life. If you're saved right now, you've got eternal life. You're not going to get eternal life. He that believeth in me has life. I am life, Jesus said. These things have been written that you might know that you have eternal life. Raise your hand, you've got eternal life. Right now, right this minute. And if you die right now, there's only one place for you to go. Straight up. But if a person is lost, it's not God's will that any person perish. Now, yes, we'll escape hell. We escape. But the thing I love about it, and I love many things about the salvation we have, that I have fellowship with God. I enjoy my communion with God. But you know what? I'm not being ugly, but I, you know, I, I just have to tell it like it is. Is that okay? How many wants me to fuzzy fuzzy it a little bit? How many wants me to tell the truth? Well, let's get out tell the truth. I'll use I'll use all right, Mike. Would you come up here? Notice I only pick on good looking men. Mm -hmm. Edify him. Now. I'd like to have some fellowship with you, but you're busy. So get busy. <laughs> Boy, I'd like to have... He's just busy. <laughs> now I'm going to be mean. Wives, your husband will probably like to have some fellowship with you, but you're busy. Oh, but there's so many things to do. I know there is. I'm 80, how many, 82 years, you think I've learned anything? 82, I've been through it all. Not just once, not just twice, not just five times, but many times. I know what I'm talking about. Because I have been through the contrite machine. How many knows what the contrite machine is? Nobody knows? I'm not going to tell you. Rick knows. Now, he, I'd like to fellowship with him, you know. It's like, th there we are, and God, God says, I'd like, okay. But in the natural now, I'd like to have fellowship, but he's busy. See, he's busy. All right, you can sit down. Thank you. You're a busy man. I find somebody else ain't so busy, maybe. But you've got to stop and have fellowship with God. Some, someone say, I love you, Pastor Bob. Not much, but I love you. <laughs> and I see that same thing in marriages. So, and, and bless Susan. And, and honey, she, oh, she's got more jobs. And 
Susan, darling, I know you're busy, baby. Come on. Let's sit on the couch for a little while. Daddy wants to fellowship a little bit with you. So she sits down. Yeah, what do you want? I, I just, I said, well, look at you. You're so pretty with those hair, those hair, hair rollers in your head. I want to let you know I love you. You're the sweet, sweet, sweet. You're the lily of my valley. You're the valley of my lily. I love you, baby. I love you. I love you. How many wives would like that? How many wives would like that? One, two, three, four. How many over here? Now, listen. You, hey, I blocked that out of my mind years ago. <laughs> Isn't it true? You want, you want a fellowship, fellowship, fellowship. But I'm too busy. Now, remember, our Heavenly Father was not too busy that he could not send Jesus down here to seek out and to save those that were lost. And who was lost? We were, but now we are saved by Jesus Christ. Mm, mm, mm. All right, let's finish this. Time's going by fast. All right, here we go. <sighs> but he answered, no, Father, Abraham. Now, the, the rich man is talking to Abraham. Remember, he can't get over there, but he can talk over this, over this gulf, this Chase them or choose them or chise them. Or How you pronounce that? C H A S E. Chasm. Chasm. Well, that's easy. Anybody ought to be able to pronounce that. What's wrong with you, Bob? I don't know. Now, how many of you? How many of you know that when I was young, I had I was what you call tie tongue. And and were, huh. Would you say, young lady? Nothing, sir. Oh, no. <laughs> wise woman, wise woman. But there are certain words I couldn't say. I couldn't say the words, you know. It turned out funny, like chism, chism, chism. Then I say a big gulf between this side and that side. So I have to stop sometimes, and I say, well, I can't pronounce that word. But say, who did God call? The simple, to confound the wise. No, you know, if I come up here and use words like, uh, uh, big words like, um, I can't even, what, what would be the big word? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to check with this engineer. Give me a big word. Woo, that's good, man. I tell you, that's a good. <laughs> Saved you, didn't I? <laughs> See, I went through my pity party on that, and I mean, you know, and I got to victory. But don't you have a lot of fun? That I can't pronounce things like hippopotamus. <laughs> Y'all just have a big fun to see me trying to scramble these words. And, but I'm glad I have a body ministry and I'll just say, what was that word again? Chasm. 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 Brother Chasm. Oh, Brother Chasm. Okay. All right. But he answered, no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them. Now, wait a minute. I see something there. I thought the rich man was dead. So how can a dead man come back here on earth? If he's dead, it means he ain't moving. But that tells me he dead, but he's still alive in hell. How many see that picture there? Or not. But he answered, no, Father Abraham. Now, this is the rich man that's speaking. Well, how can somebody that's dead speak? And he's speaking to Abraham across this here right. That's right. You got it. His emotions, Golf. His feeling. He's dead, but he's alive. 
Now it's his spirit. Get that picture now. That's down there in hell. And here's what the rich man, the rich man who's supposed to be dead, talking to Abraham who's supposed to be dead, by the way, but he's alive in paradise down there. So we've got two dead people talking to one another. That's a goodie. That shows you that the spirit is eternal. It doesn't die. The flesh dies. The spirit lives forever. It's eternal. That's why it's so important to make your decision here on this earth while you are in these bodies to get saved. Now, being saved is more than just say, well, I'm saved. No, you have, when a person truly gives their life to Christ, there is a spiritual energizing power of the Holy Ghost that creates in you a new spirit, and you become a brand new creation in God. The old has gone, the new has come. You were a sinner, but now you're a saint. See, there is a supernatural rebirth. We must understand what has happened to us. You're not here because of some intellectual decision you made that, oh, hallelujah. No, there is something that happened to you when you received Christ. And if it hasn't happened, then you're not saved. But you know if you're saved. You just know. Because the Spirit of God bears witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. Hello? All right. So now, remember, sometimes, well, I've got to go to church. And I've been there, man. I've, 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 I've go, I got up at 2 o'clock in the morning, was down at the hospital with people, come home Sunday morning, get ready, come to church. But I would always come, say, God, if you don't quicken me, if you don't make me alive, I'll just be in that place like a, like a, 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 a zoomy or a zummy or a dummy or whatever. There would be no life in me whatsoever. And God quickens me. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal body. And you've got to know how to receive that. Before I come over here, I'm alive, man. I'm ready to testify. I'm ready to preach. I'm ready to teach. I've got messages stacked up to the ceiling. Because I study. I stay in the Word. Even when I worked. When I went to the bathroom, I didn't smoke cigarettes. I went to the bathroom, and I had my little Bible. I could read a couple chapters while I'm sitting there on the throne. What are y'all laughing at? Y'all don't do that? <laughs> you sit on my commode in my house, you've got books there you can read. Time to come out. You've been in there for two hours, Susan. As soon as I finish this, uh, uh, this, uh, 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 this book, yeah, you have, make sure you have my two. Uh, if you come in my house, you got, we got things right there. Before you leave, we'll probably give you uh, if you're not saved or something like a UPS man, he, he leaves a package and we give him a package. <laughs> yeah, see, people will bring, God will bring people right to you. Be ready, in season, out of season. These uh, faith books back there, these uh, magazines, have them ready, give them to people. Would you go to the hospital? Be alert and alive. Oh, I tell you what, the doctors just love that one joke I have. I got five more minutes. I got to say this joke. But this joke, they love it. The nurses love it. This guy had this dog. He loved this dog. And one day he comes into the front room. And the dog's laying on the floor. It looks like he's dead. I believe he is dead. Oh, my dog, I think he's dead. So he took the uh, dog up in his arms, put him in the car, took him to the veterinarian, laid him on the floor. Doc, my dog, is he dead? Well, i got to examine him. Well, go ahead. So the doctor opens his door, and this cat comes out. The cat comes out, goes around the dog once, twice, sniffs him, go back into the room. The doctor, veterinarian doctor shuts the door, and he goes, hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Let me check one more area. Okay, one more area. So he goes over to this other door. This dog comes out. It's a lab dog. The lab dog comes over, goes around the dog once, twice, sissing, go back in the room. The doctor shuts the door. Yeah, he did. Oh, my dog is dead. How much you owe you? $400. $400 for what? Well, 200 for the lab tests. <laughs> and 200 for the CAT scan. All right. Those doctors love it. Then I bring my little wallet out. I usually have it in my pocket. I got one more question before I go, Doc. <clears throat> How do you hide a camel in the desert? And they go, duh. And I say, you don't know? No. You give up? Yeah. Put that right there. I put it. You camouflage him. Oh, my God, that's good. I turn the other side. Shield of faith. You got a computer at home? Yeah. Check me out. And by the way, if you don't like what I'm saying, just tear it up. Don't worry about it. By the way, Doc, do you know the Lord is your personal Savior? And everything in the room freezes up. Boom. Don't bother me. I feel warm all inside. Holy Ghost is all over me. Uh, this is no time to talk about it. When can we talk about it? Not today. I'm busy. Okay. I love you. Now, remember, God loves you. Bye. I mean, you just don't make no difference what they say. Be that witness. I mean, you understand what I'm talking about? It's the most exciting thing in the world. And besides, listen, if they put you in jail, we'll come down and visit you. And Justine will make you a cake. <laughs> but the, the deal is, though, she's got to give half of it to me. <laughs> This is our time. This is our moment of truth. Just go right into you got, I, I, We come out of the restaurant. i got three more minutes. We come out of the restaurant. they got everybody talking around there, laughing, telling jokes. And I, come, I just step right in the middle of the, of the next thing. There's somebody, uh, can we help you? I said, yeah, yeah. Y'all seem like y'all having a good time here. Yeah, we're doing fine. Yeah, yeah. i got a question I want to ask everybody. And everybody quiets down. How do you hide a camel in the desert? Yeah. Everybody, oh, man, they're scratching their head. Their eyes are rolling back in their head. Don't nobody know? I thought, sure, there'd be somebody here, but no, in this group. And they all, no, we don't know. So I got my cards. <laughs> Give them a card. You camouflage him. And they just laugh and laugh and laugh. But see, I have put into their hands the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the power of God unto salvation for those that believe. I have put into their hands answers to questions that they but really hadn't said anything about to nobody, but they have wondered about. Just like what I'm talking about tonight. How many churches... Talk about what I'm talking about tonight. You have been an instrument in God's hand to put into their... Because when we stand at the judgment seat of Christ, how many people have you witnessed to? Well, I can say thousands in my lifetime. How many have you witnessed to? Now, I'm not fussing. I'm not complaining. But I am trying to wake the church up as a whole. When somebody comes, come, I don't care what they say. Listen, if they don't get saved, why did Jesus come down here to save them? Who's he going to use now that he's going back in heaven? You and me. All right. Now, listen, we've been saved from that, and we want other people to be saved from this hell that it is not God's will that any man perish. But why are we afraid? I went, I, I tell you, I'll be honest, I went through that period of being afraid. I remember at night I'd go visit houses, and uh, I'd, I'd finally, I might go around the, the, the block about three times, and finally I'd get enough nerve up, and I'd stop, and I'd go in, and, and, and I would knock on the door. 
Oh, nobody home. <laughs> I'm just being honest. That's where I was. Then I'd go home and I'd say, God, why am I afraid of? You know? And I'd read the scriptures and I'd pray and I'd intercede. And little by little, God would give me that strength. And now I'm as, the Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. Now I'm not talking about being arrogant. I mean, there's wisdom in all of this. But I use wisdom. I listen to the Holy Spirit. And I follow him. And if you notice Jesus' message, I mean, his life, wherever he went, what did he do? He witnessed. He witnessed. And he showed the disciples how to witness. All right, we've got to close here real quick. And the next verse is 31, the last verse. He said to him, Abraham's talking. If they do not hear and listen to Bob and the shield of faith, neither will they be persuaded and convinced and believe, even if someone should rise from the dead. Now that's powerful, isn't it? That's powerful. But you know what? We've been saved from hell. We've been saved from our sins. We've been saved to live for God and to serve him. And I am so glad, I am so glad that we're mindful of that more than anything else. In the daytime, what are you mostly mindful of? I hope if you're driving, you're, you know, you're really mindful that you're driving. But what are you, what is your, where's your brain at? Where's your thought pattern at? On self? Or, oh God, Pastor Bob brought that message. I didn't realize I was saved from from what Lazarus was going, from what the rich man was going through. I'm saved from that burning flame and that burning hell. Throughout eternity, you'd have to stay there. You can't get out. There's no exits. There's no exits. There's no doors. Once you get into that place, that's it. Throughout eternities of eternities of eternities, you, will, you would be in agony. No wonder I worship the Lord. No wonder I praise God. No wonder I'm excited about what the Lord has done. He came down here, he seeked me out, and he saved me. And I'm a different man than I've ever been in my, all my life. And so are you. So get happy. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. That God put us in Christ. And we can rejoice at what the Lord has done. Amen? Let's pray. Father, I thank you that a new anointing of boldness will come into the fiber of your people. There's people in our own family. There's children that are not serving the Lord. We need to confront them in love and get them to think about some things. Let us be bold. And get them to realize that time is short and the coming of the Lord is at hand. When we look at all of what's happening in the world, what's happening in our country, the floods, the, the, this, everything is extraordinary. Tornadoes, earthquakes has never been so severe. We must understand that we are in the last days. We see the signs all around us. Even in our own neighborhood, people are, are shooting people. Killing people. All of that is part of the last days. And we got to be brave and courageous and realize it is your will that no man perish, but that all should come to repentance. So, Lord, we want to thank you that when you came down here, you seeked us out, you saved us from hell, you saved us from ourselves, you saved us from our sins, and you caused us to be born again by the Spirit of God. And I thank you for the victory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.